<laughs> well, hello everybody. This is a great intro. Anybody else want to puke? Hey guys, we are on a surprise trip and it all started because a fan wrote us a message asking for us to critique her Beginner beginner's guide, guide mm -hmm. to owning a pet parrot. So we replied and she doesn't know this yet, but we're going to go surprise her. And uh, how old is she? 13. 13. So we're off on a surprise trip all the way out to not tell anywhere, but we're going to stay in uh, in Spokane tonight at the hotel near the airport. And then we're going to fly out first thing bright and early tomorrow morning to go give a little surprise visit. This is day one. Okay, so today is the day we are going to surprise Gabrielle. She's a 13-year-old fan of ours that wrote us a very long letter and asked us for our help on kind of critiquing her beginner guide for, for bird owners. And so we started doing that. I had a Zoom call with her that was pretty long and we still didn't make it through the entire <laughs> guide. And so I kept telling her that we would make more time to go through the rest. And so here we are, we've made more time to go through the rest, only she has no idea that we've come this far. We thought it'd be a really, here. really cool way to uh, to reach out and help. Really, I guess, kind of like the next generation of bird trainers. And she's somebody who's incredibly passionate about uh, about bird training and birds. And so, coming all the way out here to North Carolina was from Idaho. A very long trip, but yeah. I yeah. think it's going to be a ton of fun to be able to help her in person. And I cannot wait to see Correct. the shock when she sees you. <laughs> I can't. I'm excited to see your reaction when she sees us. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I'm not, her mom kind of warned me that she might be really, really reserved about it. Mm -hmm. She might be nervous, but I'm hoping since we have a couple days here that we'll really get to know her and get her to warm up to us. And um, I think it's really important to let the younger generation know that people are reachable. So when you see people on Instagram or YouTube or wherever you, platform that you're seeing them, like remembering that they're they're people yeah. and don't put them on this super high unreachable pedestal um, because they're relatable and <laughs> they're human, you know? So yeah. I know for me, oh, it's good. That? Okay. I know for me, um, having other people that have larger accounts than me, a larger following who I've been following for a while and like really, really respect when they acknowledge me, it's a really big deal and a really good feeling and so it's humbling and I want to make sure that we pass that feeling on. Which is funny because it's like 300,000 subscribers and then someone with 1.2 million is like seems like such a huge difference. When yeah you feel like a small fish in yeah. a way and so being recognized is like really good feeling and it I want to make sure I never lose that and that I always am able to pass that on to somebody else and also to encourage her to continue on because I'm sure if there's people that she admires in any industry I want her to feel encouraged because she remembers this one time she wrote a letter yeah and somebody responded I'm excited it's gonna be a cool story yeah hi my name is Gabrielle um, I first got into birds because of my rescue finch Bebe and ever since then I've been obsessed with learning all that I can about birds and specifically parrots that is how I got introduced to the Bird Tricks channel. Um, I just love all their content and their birds, and I just wanted to learn all that I could about um, being the best parrot owner I could, and Bird Tricks is how I did that. Um, I now have four finches and a blue peach face lovebird, Luxa, um, and I volunteer at a parrot rescue in my area, and I was a quarantine home for them, which required over 15 hours of parrot training classes. Hey, we wanted to work on the rest of your book. Hi. <laughs> I told you I'd make time, right? <laughs> nice oh, to meet you. Nice to meet you too. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Our daughter Capri. Capri, this is Gabrielle. 
she's the one that we told you has a little love bird. She's Thank really you. excited to meet your love bird. <laughs> Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Too. Awesome, thank you so much. <laughs> yes. He told me he was my uncle. Thanks, uh, for, your thanks for being sneaky. <laughs> I guess we're oh. ultimate people then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we had it all up until. I've had my lovebird Luxa for about 10 months now. Um, we had a rough start with her because she came to us with a severe upper respiratory infection. Um, it was a hard thing because she was only eight weeks old and I was constantly dealing with the fact that she might not necessarily make it. That may have been the reason that we immediately bonded so much was because I, I, I just knew from the beginning that I couldn't lose her. And with us spending every second together because I had to keep a, a close eye on her all the time, um, I think Luxa just really got used to me very quickly. Um, it took about a month of a strict regimen of medicine and a few vet hospitalizations um, before she fully recovered. Oh, Capri, look, they're out. Oh, man. No, I saw them. Some string or something. They fly. Oh, they what a amazing little flyer. Yeah, they are always trying to find stuff for their nest. Yeah. You imagine, it's really cute. Oh, yeah. That's Pip and that's Pepe, and then she was upstairs being quirky. To Pip and Pepe? Yeah. Pepe um, was my first bird, and he's a rescue. She has a lot of personality. Smile, oh, yeah. <laughs> she knows what she likes and what she doesn't do. <laughs> <laughs> that was super cute. No. Seasonal okay. feeding system in the morning and then pellets in the evening or swapped. So you can do pellets in the morning and seasonal in the evening. But when you do that, when the diet's lined up right, then you just get so much more leverage out of the treats that you do have. And so that might that that alone might face a little challenge of like 75% of the time she flies. But then if you're still having a problem, that's where I would set up where she can intentionally fail. And it's like, okay, I know she's not going to fly from this distance, but she'll fly from this distance. So we'll do a couple reps here, and I'm going to step back and ask for a recall. She's probably not going to do it. So I'll go shuffle papers for 30 seconds, come back and do it again. What that'll teach her is that if she refuses to do it, you don't just sit there and keep calling. She lost her opportunity to get that really high value treat. And it's a higher value because it doesn't exist in her diet anymore. Thank you. Yeah. Does that make sense? So good. Mm-hmm. How long do your flight sessions usually go? Um, only up to 15 minutes. Um, so we can by switch. Do that one again. Good girl. <laughs> For flight sessions, we usually try to go not off of time. So it's kind of a trick question. Mm -hmm. So what I look for is developing their skills in a very specific way mm -hmm. and then um, going uh, push people more and more towards going off of repetitions and getting perfect repetitions as opposed to 15 minutes worth of flights and so what happens is you build the anticipation more if you get five perfect repetitions and you only reward the perfect ones let's say you get 
there's another one mixed into that and it wasn't exactly what you wanted, and you just reset it. What it'll do is it'll keep her anticipation really high for flight training, but um, you'll get a higher quality even though you're doing fewer reps because you're only rewarding the exact perfect ones that you want. So, and, and like you said, you know, you keep it to a certain time because you want to make sure that she has interest. She's so cute. Just stare at me like she's listening. She's like, yeah. Um, but yeah, so keeping it shorter to like a certain amount of reps, I think you'll find will be more beneficial. We all learned a ton from Birdrick's visit. I really appreciated Dave's diagram for training, um, Jamie Lee's help on my book, um, their advice on getting ahead of hormones, and in general, their incredible level of knowledge when it came to any questions that we had. Some of the things that were in Lux's cage or her training environment were causing hormonal triggers that, for now, were slight, but in the future it would have caused bigger reactions such as biting and aggression. Um, they would have had, we would have had a very hard time figuring them out without bird tricks. Gonna measure you. You are five feet three and one half inches ah, tall. I'm a shorter. One point six one meters. research and had a lot of training but still learned so much from Bertrix's visit and Lux's life is better for it. Um, since Bertrix came I have moved around several toys. Um, we've all been very careful to watch Lux's body language. Um, I've changed her food bowl so that she can't nest in it um, or exhibit nesting behavior in it. Um, and she is extremely happy and healthy as she is fully converted onto Bertrix pellets. Um, Luxa can now fly up to 60 feet and she's very playful with her flying and she likes to show off, which I find that very funny. Um, she's getting really good at target training um, and I love the training tools that Bertrix gave me. And Luxa is crazy about the pellets and the toys that we got from Bertrix. I still just can't believe that Birdtrix cares so much about encouraging the parrot passion of their fans that they would come so far just to surprise me. Um, it's, it was very inspiring and educational at the same time. <laughs> <laughs>